That's the Zoom, and that's you. Yeah. Um, Morning, all. Just a reminder that there's uh, no embargo on today's press conference, and uh, priority will be given to those in attendance here in the room at Seagrave. Um, we'll take a couple on Zoom at the end if we've got time. So, if you'd like to raise your hands on Zoom, if you do have any questions, but we'll uh, we'll start with uh, Jason Bourne from Talksport. Thanks, James. Good morning. Good morning. You had a great pre season in the first team at Leicester City. I spoke a simple question. How's it going? Yeah. Um... I'm delighted to to have played as many games as I've played in the last couple of months. Um, it was always something that I, I, hope, I believe that would happen. I just knew I had to be patient. Um, but no, I'm glad, I'm happy that the, the gaffer shown trust in me to be able to keep playing me, and hopefully I've repaid him in in some way or another. And I just I'm looking now to just keep going forward and helping the team as much as possible, and and, and keep uh, progressing. I think a lot of us were following the progress from the Leighton last season. I remember Brandon speaking last summer. I think when he was asked about, you know, where would you go? Would you be here? Would you go out alone? And he said, no, Kenny's going to be staying close. How did you find that step up initially then from the Championship and then playing in the Premier League, the Rugby League, the Conference League, and the other first team competitions here at Leicester? Yeah, um, yeah, to be fair, it was it was a bit of a step up. Um, obviously, I was in the Championship and that was a great season. It was successful for me, but it's a different beast in the Premier League and in the in Europe. So, luckily, I'd been training with the the team a lot before I went to Luton, so I was I was prepared for that. But in terms of going into the games, yeah, you could you can see there's a there's a change in tempo. The quality of player is higher. No disrespect to anyone in the champ, but they obviously are very good players. So you have to just be concentrated twenty four seven, and you have to really be on your game because there's no there's no hiding place in this level so you have to um, take every day as it comes work as hard as you can and then and then take your chance I think you said in a, in a previous interview maybe in the last round how much you, you love Leicester City how much you love playing for the football club and that resonated with a lot of the club's fans a slightly left field question obviously no debut from this area um, for watching Leicester City do you remember your first game that you attended, do you remember the scoreline who took you and you know, those early members of watching the football club? Ah, oh, yeah. It would. I can't remember the exact game, but it it would have been in like it would have been in league. It would have been less in League One. It would have been. It was a game at the King Power. The first game I properly remember was when we played Real Madrid. Was it a preseason game or something? And the Jose was a stand. Yeah, that was the first game I properly remember because I was like. We did. I little did a walk around the pitch in that, and I remember seeing like Ronaldo, Casillas, and I was like, "Wow!" But um, no, when Leicester in League One, I remember that fondly because that was when I was really young in the academy, and and I was thinking at that point, "Wow, it'd be amazing to be able to play for the first team in in League One." And then <laughs> fast forward, however long I'm, I'm playing in the Premier League, so now it was it's, it's a great feeling. Cheers, thank you. Thanks, Jason. Mr. Kirsty from Sky, please. Hi there. Hi, you're right. Um, just following on from that, England squad's announced tomorrow. Your name has been mentioned at times. Is that a real driving force for you? And do you hold any hope of, of maybe securing a place in a special year? For sure, that is. I've made that clear. It's, some, it's definitely a dream of mine in the future to play for England. Um, I know it, the best possible platform for you to do well and get a place for England is playing well in the Premier League and in Europe. So I'm just trying to play as well as I can. And and I believe that there's a point in the future where I will get in the squad, um, whether that be now or not, I, I'm not sure. But it's something that it's a massive drive for me, not only that, but just, just playing as well as I can for Leicester, because I know... It's just a positive. It's only a positive. The better I do for Leicester, for me, and for the club. So, yeah, it's something that I've definitely want in the future, and then I'm I'm hoping to to take that when it, if it comes. And your manager recently said that you're a potential future Leicester captain as well. Is that, is that got to be a big ambition of yours? For sure, that would be a real dream. For saying that, I've came, I've been in the club since I was eight years old. A lot of credit's got to go to the to the manager for me, especially because he's been he's done everything for me since when he came I was playing in the under 23s and I was just 
learning my trade. I hadn't played any first team games yet. So he's showed a massive amount of trust in me and I'm so glad that I've been able to show a bit of trust back and for him to say things like that, it just gives me great motivation. Um, but that's what you want as a player. You want your manager to have trust in you and, and believe in you and and it resonates back and it makes you want to work so hard for the team and for, for the club and, and it's a great relationship. And in terms of this game you've got tomorrow, how do you approach it, taking that 2-0 lead there? Is this high over? No, definitely not. Um, we saw that they have they do have great quality and in the in the first game they've shown that in, in in spells of the game and we know that they're doing well in in the French league they score a lot of goals and they don't really concede many so it's good that we've got the little cushion but that doesn't mean that we're going to take anything off the gas um we want to go there relax play our game we know that we can nullify their threats we've shown that and we know when we're at our best and then we can create chances and score goals so it's going to be a different atmosphere at their at their place but I'm sure that we're going to be going there hoping to get through to the, to the last day of the competition. Great, thank you. Thank you. That's Kirsty Owen from Radio Leicester. Hi, uh, Kirsty. Yeah. Good thing. Um, I wonder, just following on from what Kirsty was saying there about what the messages have been from, from Brendan about how you have to go into this game because you're a very, very young squad. So what have been the messages from the manager about exactly how to, to treat this game in the moment? He, he said... He said just just relax he knows it is a, it's a it's a big game for everyone at the club and and for all of the fans and we know that we're tr- t- treating it as a, as a massive game but we don't want to have that as a pot negative impact on our performance we want to be relaxed out there know that when we're doing exactly what we know we can do then we're we're more than capable of winning the game so no matter what happens in the game we go one goal up we go one goal behind we don't get flustered we relax and we just play our game because Everyone knows we've got great, great quality in the squad, and and we, we are we favourite in this tournament to go far. So we're going to be taking that into the game. And he's just said to us, "Play your game, and if you do that, then you'll be more than good enough to to progress." What did you learn from Ren maybe last week that you're able to to take into this game? Those initial learnings from from the first time. Yeah, we know that they're they're a good footballing team, and they have some good individuals. Um, we've seen that in the first leg, and I just feel like. It's a game where if we just put them under pressure, we make it uncomfortable for them. That they, they that that's where we get our opportunities. Um, there was times in the first leg where that happened, and we got great opportunities. And then just show our quality because we know when our players are showing our quality, then it's hard for anyone to deal with. We've seen that in the first leg with some with two great goals, and and it's just the tempo and the intensity of the Premier League. I feel like that's a lot different to all the other leagues. So it's about keeping that quick press intense intense style of play and if you do that there's there's not many teams that can deal with that is that the key for playing in Europe that, that Premier League intensity that is just so different to anything that you, that you might see on the continent week in week out yeah I feel like that's a big thing we, we know that different countries have different styles and I think the Premier League one of one of the big things in the Premier League is the, t- the intensity everyone says it it's the toughest league in the world in my opinion so I feel like you have to take that into games because it's a it's something that you're doing week in, week out and it's something that another team might not be experiencing. So it's definitely a thing you can use to add your advantage and we've got a fit, strong squad. So it's something, adding that to the quality as well, it's, it's definitely a good recipe. And, uh, and finally, Kim, as a, as a Leicester boy, academy product, what's it like for you, the kind of feeling you get when you're representing your club in, in Europe but in a last 16 knockout tie in against a side like Red in a stadium like Rojan Park how, how does that make you feel? Yeah it's a great feeling um, it's something that I dreamed of and it's to say, to say that I'm doing it now is a bit surreal like I laugh because it's, it's what you play when you're a kid on like the video games you're playing in Europe and then you're doing it in real life it's it's unbelievable to see like fans travelling out abroad to, to to watch you play I say last week a uh, couple of weeks ago in Wrens it was amazing the atmosphere from the fans so that just gives you the, the added spice it, we know that it's just they're going to travel anywhere around the, around the world so it gives it that ad- added little incentive so yeah nice it's a great feeling and I truly believe we can go as far as we can in this competition and win it so it's about taking every step step by step and and then going from there Okay, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Thanks, over to Nick, man. Yes. Okay. You touched on it there just saying it's a little bit surreal. 
in terms of where you're at. I just wondered whether your career progression, where it is now, is where you expected it to be at this stage, or whether it's a little bit further on. Um, no, it's it, it's not. It's it's where I expected to be. Um, if to be honest, I I, w- I would have hoped to probably be here a bit sooner, but the way that my uh, career went, my pathway, I went on the, the couple of loans that I did and and to be fair, I'm happy I did that. It's it's brought me to where I am now. So I'm definitely where I want to be. Uh, this is where I want to be. I want to be playing in the Premier League and in Europe because I believe that I'm good enough and I can definitely make a difference. So I say it's surreal, but I mean surreal just because it's my home club. It's not because I don't feel like I want to be here. Like this is exactly what I want to be doing. So I want to be continue to doing this and playing in Europe every year. And that's why we are taking this so seriously. And um, yeah, it's something that is a massive, massive um, thing for us to be trying to achieve this season. And with that in mind, I'm not saying it's on the forefront of your mind right now, you've got a couple of years left in your contract anyway, but the club do like to reward the, the players for, for what they've done. Is a longer stay very much sort of there? Uh, uh, it would be great to stay at this club for as long as possible I've been here for more than half my life but um, yeah it's, for me it's just about trying to play as well as possible if you do that everything else sort of takes care of itself so for the moment while I'm playing week in week out that's only a good thing for me and the club so I'm sure in the down the line in the future there might be talks about whatever but um at the moment, I'm just focusing on trying to get as far as possible in this competition and finishing as high as possible in the Premier League. Nothing just yet, then? No, no, nothing just yet. Nothing just yet. And just on this competition, obviously, it's been an inconsistent season, I guess, for the squad. But just what could it do for the club as a whole to, to get on the way in this competition, right? Yeah, it'd be, ma- it'd be massive. It, at the end of the day, it's another, it's another bit of silverware. You can never... So you can never complain about a bit of silverware. Um, it great. It, it breeds winning mentality in the club and morale. And we're getting more, more players back now, so it's it's going to be only a positive time at the club. And I feel like, as you say, winning this tournament does give you European football next season, and that's something that everyone at this club wants because we are a team with high profile players and high motivation we don't want to be just settled for playing in the Premier League we want to be playing in more competitions that brings more games but that, that's things that, that's what you have to deal with that's why you have a fit and strong squad so yeah it's um, yeah it's exciting Thank you Thanks Nick we'll uh, head over to Zoom Jordan Blackwell from Leicester Mercury Hi Kenan Are you right? Yeah good thank you well a bit, bit husky sorry um <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say uh, the manager has praised your impact on Harvey Barnes and his improved form over recent weeks. It seems you're getting him a lot of, of, of good possession early and you're getting the ball into his feet. Is that something you're deliberately doing or is it just is it just a, a natural thing? Obviously, you will have played a little bit for the under-23s together a, a few years ago. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of both, to be fair. Like... As I, as I've said, me and Barnsley, we've come through the academy together. He, I know he's a, he's a year above me, but we played together a lot through the academy in the youth cup and in under twenty three. So I, I know his game inside out. Really, I know his strengths. And yeah, I'd pro- there are times in the game where I think I, I can play to your strengths. Yeah, I know if you get isolate someone one v one, then he's a massive threat for the team. So. And it, it 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 works well with with me and my left foot. When I turn out, I can fizz it out to him, and I can do little combination plays. So there are times where it naturally just happens, but then probably there are times in the game where I think he's had a bit of success, and I, I, I want to keep giving him the ball because that's where we're getting a lot of of good work. So it's a bit of both, and I feel like it's worked well in this last couple of weeks. We've got a great relationship on and off the pitch, so a long way that continue. Yeah, and it's obviously it's a, a, a homegrown left side as well with Luke there as well. I know there's a lot of pride for the fans that the, you know there's three players playing on that side that all grew up locally and came through the academy. Is that is the pride for you to not only be playing for your hometown club but to see other players locally playing for the hometown club? Yeah, definitely. I know I know how hard it is to get to the point where we're at. It, it's a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of work, determination. So I have the utmost respect for everybody that that ends up playing in a first team environment. And it's no different with people like Luke, Barnsley and Harvey uh, and, and Hamza because they've had to do 
a lot of hard work to get there and it, and it just makes it even sweeter that we're all there at the same point because we've known each other since we were, we was kids and we've we've all talked about dreaming of being in the first team and now it's at the point now where we are so it's just about having a great relationship when when you have that on and off the pitch then it only it only breeds good playing success and we have that so that's why I feel like at the moment we've got a good understanding on the pitch and it's showing Thanks very much Kieran Okay, then. Yeah, best of luck for tomorrow Thank you Thanks guys we'll wrap it up and we'll, uh, we'll return to half past nine with, with Brandon Thanks guys Thank you everyone Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.